Hey everyone, welcome to React course. In this lecture, we are going to understand the React component lifecycle. In many situations in which you need to more granular control over a component. For instance, if you are creating a checkbox, we change the size when we click on it based on the screen width. Or wanted to create a component which call an Ajax request when we mount the component in the UI. The best approach is to use component lifecycle event. By mounting events, you can inject the necessary logic into component. Moreover, you can use other events to make components smarter by providing specific logic about whether or not to re-render their views. Each component has several lifecycle methods that can overwrite to run code at particular times in the process. These methods are called in the following order when an instance of a component is being created and inserted into a DOM. Let's say you create a component and just start your development server. The React lifecycle event will first call the constructor method of the class which create an instance of a component. Then it will call the get derived state from the props method. This will return an object to update the state or null to update nothing. Then it will just call the method render which render the component in the UI. The React component event lifecycle belongs to three categories mounting events, updating events, and unmounting events. The mounting events happen when the React element is attached to the DOM node. Then we have updating events. This event is happen when a React element is updated as a result of a new values of its properties or state. Then we have unmounting events. These events happen when a React element is detached from the DOM. Each and every React component has lifecycle event that are triggered at certain moments depending on what a component has done or will do. In these three categories, React defines several component events. Mounting In React, mounting invokes events only once. Then we have updating. In updating, React can invoke events many times. And in unmounting events, React invokes events only once. In addition to lifecycle events, We'll include constructor to illustrate the order of execution from start to finish during the component lifecycle. Constructor method happens when the element is created and lets you to set default properties and state. In these three categories, we have several methods. So we have first mounting events. In the mounting event, we have two methods. First is component will mount and second is component did mount. So the first component will mount will happen before mounting to the DOM. Then we have component did mount. This method will happen after mounting and re-rendering. Right? Then we have updating events. In this event, we have four methods. First, component will receive props. It means properties. Then we have should component update. Then we have component will update. And the last, component did update. So the first component will receive props will happen when the component is about to receive properties. The second method is should component update. This method will return boolean value lets you to optimize the component re-rendering by determining when to update and when to not update. Just after that we have third method which is component will update. This method is happen right before the component is updated. And the last we have component did update. So this method is happen right after the component updated. Just after that we have a third category which is unmounting. In this category we have a function which is component will unmount function. This function will let you unbind and detach any event listener or do other cleanup work before the component is unmounted. Each of these functions give you more granular control over a component. These methods are very simple to remember. Event names makes clear to developer when the event is triggered. For example, component did update method is fire when the component is updated. So this method says that this method is fire when the component is updated. So the name of this component is refers to the action, right? In the next lecture, we are going to take each of these three categories and understand its methods. That's it. I hope you understand this lecture. 
if you have any question you can ask me in the comment answering the question specified in the comment will definitely help you to improve your knowledge that is all for now we will see you in the next lecture